you just get me wet at all, I'm popping out babies. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Do you miss going to the video store, acid wash jeans, and MTV with music, maybe even some teased hair? We all love that too. I know I know Anthony does, I know I do. Welcome to Mike and Anthony's Soda Pop Culture Club. Me, Mike, along with my co-host Anthony. This is the bathroom buddy. Oh, bring our take on a classic movie every Monday from the 80s, 90s, and beyond, during which we will play the game and open up a six-pack of favorite scenes. We also point out a couple of generic scenes as well. At the end of the show, we'll rate the movie 1 to 24 cans. One can! I don't even know what to say about this fucking movie. It is the bathroom, buddy. And 24 cans... No, it's not. 24 cans is getting your own bathroom, buddy. It's getting your own bathroom, buddy. One can is getting a gizmo. Okay, but no. we get to, uh, what? One can, I think, is being too stupid to know that Phoebe Cates likes you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but before we get to all that, we want to let you know. We're working we want- at a bank and dealing with that bitch every day. Uh, well, it is what it is. It comes in. <laughs> we want to do the movie suggested by our listeners. That's you. And there's four ways to do this. One is join the Patreon. You suggest it there. We do it. Um, if you want us to do it like right away, like you sent me a message today through PayPal or Venmo at Soda Pop Culture Club, you send me $25 and you say a movie, then all of a sudden Anthony's like, oh shit, I got to watch this movie and do it for next week. That's what it would be. It'd be the next thing we do. Um, plus we have a third way that's through our website, sodapopcultureclub.com where you can buy merch, do all kinds of things. But one of them is on the front page is suggest movies, which we do on our schedule if we like it. Um, and, you know, Anthony has a fourth way that he would like to explain. I do. Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, and in your review, mention what movie you'd like us to do. Yes. Do Thank that. You. Put it in there. Say, say Anthony eats cock, but I want to do this movie. That yes. is the kind of comments he looks for. Um, That'll so get yes. you off the list right there. <laughs> Now, I want you guys to check out our Instagram at Mike and Anthony, where we, we've been posting the stuff that's associated with our movies, plus memorials, like we talked about in the last episode. I don't want to go down that depressing thing. So we'll just say, go there, whatever we're doing, you'll see what it is. And, you know, that's, How about you know. Mike's dick isn't big enough to fuck a bug. Leave wow. that too. And then I'll do your movie. Are you talking... A Volkswagen bug is a pretty big piece of machinery, so I'll take it. Um, some iconic figures have... Uh, he would stick yeah, like his dick in a tailpipe, I will tell you that. Oh, man. Oh, like I said, some iconic figures have passed recently, and it's just really making it depressing, so we're not going to go into that. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I told myself I wasn't going to cry. But, I, but like he said, go to Apple Podcasts, hit us up with that five-star review, put the movie in the comment. Helps us, helps you. Everybody wins. What say you, Anthony? That's what I say. Leave a comment too and say, Mike, shut the fuck up at the beginning of the podcast because you waste too much time and you can't talk about the movie. Uh, or just put a comment that says, hit the trailer, right? Yeah. Hey, let's do that. Hit the what trailer. What is it? It's your new pet. <laughs> Number one, you got to keep him out of bright light. <laughs> Number two, keep him away from water. <laughs> this is incredible. And probably the most important thing, don't ever feed him after midnight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Billy, what are these things? Gremlins. How come a cute little guy like this can turn into a thousand ugly monsters? <laughs> Mrs. Deagle. I'll bet every kid in America would like to have one. They might even replace the dog as the family pet. Replace the dog? I could see it happening. I really yeah, I, I could see it happening. Yeah, Gremlins. Excellent, excellent. Um, very, very enjoyable trailer there. 
Uh, they make, you know, sometimes trailers are really good. You know, I think that one is a good trailer. Um, so are you ready, Anthony, for that thing that makes you so happy? Oh, every... you just play the game. I'm so excited. We're going to play the game, and the game is where I'm going to read Anthony three reviews. Two of them are real. One of them is fake, and as usual, he will not point that one out. But I'm sure you will when you're listening along. You'll spot it, and you'll laugh because he's an idiot and doesn't notice. What do you think about that, Anthony? Yeah, play it. Woo! All right, are you ready Can't for this? Wait to be wrong again. Uh, you, you you were wrong when you woke up. All right, here we go. Uh, Joe Donner, Seattle Weekly. MacGuffin, an object or device in a movie or book that serves merely as a trigger for the plot, a.k.a. the humans in Gremlins. Dick Corliss, Time Magazine. A wildly original roller coaster ride of hilarious mischief. Alan Jones, Stardust. With its unique, far-out quality, Gremlins is best described as the Evil Dead for kids. Am I supposed to guess now? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, usually after I read them, you think about it for a moment, and then you tell me the wrong answer. <laughs> okay. So I really wasn't even paying attention, just so you know. Do you want me to read them again? No, I'll guess the third one. And why is that? Just because the Evil Dead for kids. I would not make that comparison. And if this is a real one, they're stupid. because that's. Just and if dumb. you were wrong, which yeah. one would you pick second? I don't know. I don't have a quarter to flip. Well, pick one. The second one. He loves being wrong twice, people. Yes. Because it's the first one. Joe Donner, also known as Joey Donner, and 10 Things I Hate About You, the douchebag with the red car. Oh, no, you can't fucking do that. You can't call him Joe. If his name is Joey, took, his name is that's Joe. Fucking che- that's I just cheating. Took the y off. That's cheating. <laughs> but how do you like that in a MacGuffin thing? I thought that was uh, very. That's uh, cheating. But you got to admit the review itself though was pretty good. I didn't yeah. listen to the fucking then, review. MacGuffin, an object or device in a movie or book that serves merely as a trigger for the plot, aka the humans and gremlins. I think that is a good. A good I think thing. That's, that would be your review about Titanic. The ship was that. Yeah, that. It, yeah, the humans were the MacGuffin for the sinking of the Titanic. You're right. Yeah, you know, and, and we just did that one. So go back and listen to that, and you'll see my thoughts, or not see them unless you are weird and dream about. You'll me. hear his shit-tastic thoughts and his sex dream about Celine Dion. It was not a sex dream. Oh, so Anyways. you guys didn't even consummate the marriage. Well, I don't, I don't know the consummation. I don't remember doing. Well, that. in your dream, you got it married. It was just and the wedding. And that the is the flight. best thing ever. In your dream, you got married and still couldn't get laid. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> hey, you know it is what it is. But don't you have something you want to say? Some things you want to tell us? Ah, uh, yeah, sure. Let's break this down by the numbers. Directed by Joe Dante. And starring Zach Galligan, Corey Feldman, Phoebe Cates, Hoyt Axton, Francis Lee McCain, and Howie Mandel as Gizmo. Gremlins was released on June 8th, 1984, taking in $212.9 million at the box office against an $11 million budget. It scores 7.3 out of 10 on IMDb and 86% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yes. Yeah, it does. I will say um, this is uh, definitely one of those ones where it's interesting, like you said, Howie Mandel as Gizmo, which he would later go on to use that voice to do what? Bobby's World. That's right, Bobby's World. Yeah, so, so yeah, he he's uh, you know people always Great think show. of him as just the America's Got Talent guy now, but there was a time where he put uh, inflatable uh, uh, rubber gloves on his head and ran around acting like an idiot. He, I think he did a lot of cocaine though. Then I think that's I think that's. Uh, if you watch Howie Mandel's act back then, I think it was a cocaine fueled um, fever dream. So there you go. I think but, that's what Gremlins is. I think it is. And but I do want to say one thing about this movie. There is one person that is credited in it, um, and that's Michael Winslow. Do you know who Michael Winslow is? I is will. He on, was he on Family Matters? No, I'll tell you. Who Winslow of, of Police Academy fame. Remember, mm-hmm. he's he's the guy who did all the machine guns and everything. He voiced some of the Gremlins. Uh, for that so that was a very that's very interesting police academy a wonderful gem we'll probably do it at some point uh the first two or so that once they get past three once somebody pays us two we will 
I we will do them eventually. I just don't think uh, he said to it. You know what? We ought to do. We ought to do a police series and do them some of the wackiest police movies, Armed and Dangerous, uh, Police Academy. You know, there's some crazy ones out there. Um, and I think uh, I think our fans, what five of them we have, would enjoy yep. that from us. Um, but I want to say this before we get into this. five two, of them that we have, two of which are not related to us. <laughs> yes. It, it, did you recognize the fictional town of Kingston Falls in this movie? What is that from or supposed to be from? Well, it should look very familiar that because it was filmed on the same set used for the town of Hill Valley. Uh, Back to the Future was nice. released a year later. So if you watch, it really is when I was watching it, the theater they go by, that is the one with the you know, the adult movies now and all that, you know? Yeah. So There's yeah. Clock when, Tower. And it kind of, it's there, but you don't see it. Like you can see the, the square, you know, you see the square, but you don't see everything there, but it was pretty interesting. You know, when I, when I saw that, I was like, once I learned that fact and I wouldn't watched it this morning. Now uh, you can't we, unsee it. Now, yeah, I can't unsee it. It's fuck. Fuck. I was like, is this, are these two, if, if, it would be weird if they were both in the same universe somehow, though. It'd be kind of cool. Well, they are. They're in the what the fuck universe because uh, yeah. DeLorean taking you back in time and Gremlins. Which one is more believable? I, I would agree. I would agree. that I, I do want to say something about this movie. That you said it's a little bit dark compared to, yes. to other movies. Okay. Not and, Evil Dead for kids, but a little bit dark. Yeah, it's not evil. De- well, you say that, but the original Gremlin script written by Chris Columbus was much, much darker. In case in point here, and this is from Mental Floss, they had this. Earlier scenes included the Gremlins eating Billy's dog, then decapitating his mom and throwing her head down the stairs. Spielberg wow. and, and director Joe Dante and Warner Brothers were all in agreement that they should tone down the gore in order to make the movie more family friendly. Oh, uh, yeah. So this I will is- tell you. It obviously would not have done as well at the box office, but I would like to see that film. I, I figured you like it either way because of some of that. But the the thing is, is that this movie and Temple of Doom, you know, Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom, yeah. were both PG. And the problem was there was nothing in between PG and R, and so it was either they were going to be R or PG. And because of those two movies is why we got PG-13. Spielberg helped them create the PG-13 because of the movies he did there. Those two. He was involved with them both. Helped so, create it? Like, okay, if you add two shits yeah. and fuck, it's PG-13 now. Well, he helped create the category because he said, well, it's not R because there's no tits and they're not cussing up a storm, but it's a little bit a little bit heavier material, like ripping a heart out of a guy in Temple Doom. And, yeah. and in this one, obviously some gore, I would say, more than now, anything. This original script, what happened to Corey Feldman? Did he get it too? I want to know that. I would love to know that because he's barely in it. It's, uh, you know, once you Only get Corey Feldman someone. gets his balls eaten off in this, in the original script. Well, yeah. I mean, well, you know, that's the thing about, let's get into that. This movie, what's the body count? You got the professor, the teacher. That's one. Professor. But, but um, people you don't see though. Yeah. I'm thinking there's a body count. You think this. this is like Fast and Furious. You know, people are dead. You just don't see it. And Billy's responsible. Or at least his dad. <laughs> or, you know. I think it's a combination. Yeah. And you know what? Here we go again. Home Alone all over again. Oh, yeah. Check great the parent. fucking alarm clock, bitch. You dumbass you know, shit. <laughs> That's not too late. Okay. Yeah, well, you know, but to just to even get to that point, I would say, I'm going to say about this movie, and I think it's kind of fitting that we skip to where you're talking about, because the first part of this movie is fucking boring. A little bit. We meet we meet the guy with the tractor, the bitchy lady with the glass snowman. Who the fuck has one of those? I mean... Not her and, anymore. And his father. You know, we have meet some characters, and, and he gets the gizmo, but... But other than that, really not much happens. I mean, you know, it's it's not it's kind of boring. I'm gonna get <laughs> I mean, her, I'm gonna give my generic too already. It's her. Oh, the because I hate her so much. Is that Mrs. Deagle? I hate her. You want to talk about? You know what? We have the term Karen now. That's where it originated. Uh, there are yeah. You know what's funny is it's like you know, it makes me wonder if we should go back in movies and fish for Karens. You know, just a. 
say, oh, it, you know, we didn't know what to call that then. <laughs> We just didn't know. We should just start doing that from here on out. Find the Karen. Where's Karen? Uh, yeah. Or is there a Karen count? Is there more than one? There, there, there is. There's usually. But Mrs. Deagle so was my generic let's just, too. Let's back up. We did Titanic last week. Rose's yeah. mom is a Karen. Yeah, she's the Karen of that. She's the Karen. I would say, and I don't know, is it a Ken? If you're, is what Billy Zane would be a Ken? Like is that the. She has done nothing in her life. She's a tag along. And Tell feels me about entitled. the accommodations. And she's totally Down feels there. entitled to what she already has so much that she'd sell her daughter off for it. I get it. Exactly. But yeah. <laughs> but no, yeah, I don't like her. She's my generic as well. I have it on here. I forgot to uh put that. I don't know. I gotta remember where I have all my six packs. Oh, my all my six packs are later in the movie, so so when we get to that. Uh but I want to talk about the guy's invention, the bathroom buddy. Do you think it's the dumbest thing you've ever seen? Fuck no. I think it's incredible. Why? That thing looks awful. It look doesn't look like very use very ergonomic. It looks I don't know. It looks it, great. I love it. You've got everything you need in one device. Yeah. Brush teeth, shave. Maybe there's a little spritzer with cologne in it on there somewhere too. Yeah, I, true. I think I I still love that. You still love that? I mean, he awesome. had a lot of inventions that I, I thought were... The egg cracker? Oh, gosh. Like, like they say they start off okay. The juicer, yep. But then get it's bad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, here's my thing. Um, I, I, is this I, a... I, go ahead. I gotta say, one of my six packs... Yeah? ...is actually the sound every time when one of his inventions fail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee maker, oh, shit. Yeah, that one's awful. Pouring out that sludge. That's awful. Now, I just want to know, is this a Spielberg thing, though? Because he did the story for the Goonies, and Data made all those little things. And in this one, they're making all little things. And I'm betting if we look close enough, there's and probably another movie where... Doc Brown. Yes, there is. Doc Brown. Um, was he involved in Back to the Future? That's Zemeckis. Hmm? That's that's Zemeckis. That's not Spielberg. No, why was I thinking... I was just, you know why? It was just because I was thinking Back to the Future because you made because that. Because the reference. same movie, yes. same fucking town. Well, that doesn't mean, you know, hey, he may have had some involvement somehow. I don't know. You never know. Um, it is. No, he is. Amblin Entertainment is okay. Spielberg. Movie. He didn't make the movie. He didn't do the story. But you never know because he's still in the room, right? Right? So it just, so it seems like movies he hovers around have that guy. With I the mean, hoverboard. Yeah, yeah, but he, he's he's around movies where there's that little tinker or that guy. I just wondered if that's a thing for him because um, it, it just seems weird to have it in multiple movies, in my opinion. Um, but I don't want a bathroom, buddy. That was my whole point on that. Oh, so. my God. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, I get why you would want one for like posterity's sake to display it and say, look what I have. <laughs> right. The bathroom buddy sitting on the door from Titanic. Now. One of the weirdest scenes in this movie early on is when Judge Reinhold hits on Phoebe Cates. Yeah. Because we all have our hangover from Fast Times at Ridgemont High. So right. It is so Judge weird. Judge Reinhold is such a D-bag in this. Which he is in most movies. I don't know. Was it uh, Tackleberry? Not Tackleberry. Uh, what's his name in the Be- Beverly Hills Cop? Um, he's not he's, a douche not, in that. No, he's, he's not a douche in that. But other things, he is. Other he's more of a dingleberry is. in that. Yeah, he's more of a weird guy. But uh, but no, I mean he's because <laughs> yeah. in but, Beverly Hills Cop. But I will say this: which I didn't have it in the facts, but it is a fact that Phoebe Cates almost didn't get this role because of her topless scene in Fast Times at Ridgemont High. They didn't think she would be wholesome enough for the character, which we all know is bullshit. Well, that's basically treating a woman for like a for blaming a woman for being a woman. I, I it's the worst kind of sexism. Mm-hmm. It? It's, it's, it's like, not good. It's like not a good. guy, a guy. J- Judge Reinhold's in this movie, and he was jerking off in the movie, but there was no fact right. about why he almost didn't get it because he was seen exactly. jerking off in the movie. <laughs> jerking off, imagining because it wasn't even Phoebe Cates showing her boobs. It was him imagining it. In yeah, it wasn't mind. even really happening. It really doesn't even count as showing your boobs when it's somebody else's imagination. That's true. 
That is true. I have a question for you. Do you think Star Wars copied Giz- Gizmo for Baby Yoda? The the whole aesthetic. Because it's very similar. Did Wait, like, did Star Wars copy Gizmo? Get, oh, yeah, for Baby for Yoda. Baby Yoda for Baby Yoda aesthetic, because it has the big eyes, it has the... Um, I just think like the uh, Furby. there's definitely some similarities. Yeah. I, I mean, it does look like the love child of Yoda and Gizmo. It does. I gotta, tell, I gotta tell you another, just randomly though, so we just finished the new Pinocchio movie. Oh, I hear some things about that, but I don't know. It's good, but it's good. Have, okay. You know, since we have uh, Hugh McGregor <laughs> playing Jimmy Cricket, little Star Wars connection there. I love But <laughs> no, what really funny is there's this... Uh, so the the traveling dickhead that basically gets Pinocchio to work for him, he's got this like minion weird fucking creature who I even sounds like that looks like a fucked up version of Stripe. So you oh, have to wow. see it for that. I gotta watch it for that. Reminds me of Stripe very much. Very much. Okay. Okay. But no, yeah, I just thought the whole uh, the whole angle of the baby Yoda. But the thing is, is uh, I mentioned Furby's the they actually sued Furbies, the the creators of Gremlins, because they looked too much like him, which they did. They did, and they got a seven figure settlement out of it, and that's all. <laughs> so it's, I don't think um, that really hurt the Furby Empire too much at the time. I, I think really all it did was they paid a seven figure, so that means in the no more than nine point nine 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 million. But I think that's basically saying, here's a bunch of money because we made $100 million. Here's some royalty dollar. Or I bet they made more than that. Twice. Yeah, they made a lot of money for them saying, for them making a toy that looks like their creature. And they changed the design of it after that, though. Yeah, I guess if you look at them, they're different. I, I mean, I, I don't, don't really want I don't want to look at them. Now, I want to talk about how shitty I think of a, a gift this would be. A Furby? This, no, a gizmo. Think of how shitty and high maintenance this gift is. Think about it. Like, the, they have these strict rules. And that little fucker, you know, does he know the rules? Does he avoid trying to break the rules? Like, this thing is like, I don't know if I, I don't think I'd want this. If my dad brought me this gift, I'd be like, I wouldn't be like, oh my gosh, I got a new little creature I've got to take care of for who knows how fucking long, you know? Like, I, I, where are you at on this? A lot of pets have strict rules. A dog's I, pretty easy. No. Feed it, feed it, water it, let it shit. There's not much to a dog. Guess what? So Gizmo, in theory, should be easier because you can't even water it. I'm taking one thing off the list. Feed uh, it. Yeah. Don't you can't water even it. touch it with water. How can, which I don't even want to get into how are they drinking beer if they can't Listen, touch water, but look, whatever. Feed it before midnight. Don't water it. Keep it in the house. That's There's it. a generic for me. Midnight. That's it. Who's That's midnight? It. Where? Where in the world well, is midnight? That's a good fucking point. <laughs> like, how do you... What? That's a really <laughs> what good point. fucking that time is. zone? Because <laughs> you feel like Gizmo was not born in the States. I don't think. No. His name, Mogwai, means demon in Chinese. So I mm-hmm. presume he's from China. So, oh, that's a huge fucking plot hole. It is. <laughs> That's why I had to say it. Unless, unless whatever time midnight is in China, that was actually the time. So they just converted it to midnight. So maybe that is the time, whatever time that is in China that you can't feed them after. Maybe it's after brunch. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know, man. I just know that it's very arbitrary. The whole midnight thing. I mean, I get it. If it's a spell that was put on like Cinderella where, because it was done locally where she's at, I could get that logical leap. But you have this animal that after midnight, what, what's that mean? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that means. And like, how explicit is that? Are we talking by the second after midnight? So, like, if I drive hey, my car, you better have your the shit next on time zone synced with military time. Like, don't just rely on whatever you set your clock at. Because, you know, people set their clocks, they're always going to be like a minute or so off. You got to get the. Yeah hand dial just right and it's gonna be bumped a little bit when you're i've got it. one for you i got one for you so i lived in kingman arizona remember mm-hmm. and laughlin was 30 minutes away and it and at this time of year it's an hour different so if i if it's seven here and i go it's six there so 
What if it's midnight in Kingman? I leave Kingman and go there at 1130, feed the guy a chicken leg, and then I drive back and it's, you know, closer to one o'clock now when I get back. Am I just good because I fed him before midnight in Laughlin or how does you know this what? work? I say you're done at dinner time. If you're not, if you're no snacks, you're done. I'm just saying if we go snack on the buffet for a few minutes, is that okay? At, at least though Gizmo knows not to eat after midnight. Let's give him credit. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I think Gizmo knows his rules better than um his offspring. Than his, uh, yeah, than his owners or his offspring. Well, his mm-hmm. offspring are obviously kind of like the multiplicity rules. Each copy is a worse version of itself. Right. Yeah. But then you have asexual reproduction in the movie. Yeah, yeah. So, so Gizmo is asexual, is what you're saying. But he did get wet during it, so that's why you need to turn this dirty. Did I go there with Gizmo? You went there with Gizmo. Oh, yeah, yeah. Snatch that up, dude. Um, I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying, like, you just get me wet at all, I'm popping out babies. Wow. (laughs) So. Really, nothing really happens till Gizmo gets wet, right? Yes, exactly. And then we start getting the things happening, and and uh, now the the cocoons, um, those are kind of very alien like, weren't they? Like, yes, like the movie aliens. Do you think they did that on purpose, like copied it, or I didn't look to I, see who did the makeup or the effects on that. It, uh, I don't know if it was the same people, but it looked they a lot like it. Copied it or just were influenced by it. Like that looks I like, I mean, how could thing? you not be influenced in popular culture by alien and other things? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's didn't gremlins come out before alien. No alien 78 or something like that. And then there's aliens, the, the sequel, and then there's alien three. I mean, do you want me to go? I mean, I do a podcast about movies. I think I know. Alien. Was you don't not trust me. He does not, folks. He's looking it up. He does not trust me when the original Alien movie came out. Alien was seventy nine. So okay, there you go. pardon me. Seventy nine. Still five years before this movie. <laughs> so, there you go. And Aliens, I think, might be around this time. So the second one with Sigourney Weaver. So yeah. yeah. Well, the first one was with Sigourney Weaver too. Yeah, but the, but okay. the second one, she was more like the plot, like bigger in the plot. Like she drove the whole vehicle type of thing. But so that's when shit starts happening. And and I think that the things start happening when they hatch. That's kind of where I'm at, where when they start becoming their lizard versions of themselves. And that's where I start having my six packs and things like that. Mm-hmm. The mother, I think she's a six pack in general. She for how she, yeah, because um, I like her mixer kill. Yeah, <laughs> I like her microwave kill. Um, she also stabbed one, I think, at some so point. We do, so we got some good kill scenes. Yeah, we got kill scenes. So that's why this really felt like you would like this. It's like a horror movie. It's just a, I've got, is this a Christmas horror movie? Ooh, I'm going to tell you what. <clears throat> yes, it is. And also, to reinforce that, one of my other six packs actually has to do with the mom. The movie that she's watching in the kitchen. What is that? I didn't, didn't it's notice. A Wonderful Life. Oh, what a horror, horror yes. movie. Yes. It's a fucking horror. It's a fucking masterpiece. Well, the only good thing about that is it got blurred out, I think, because they fucking did it in. But here's my... I have a question for you. When she's done killing him and she goes into the living room where the tree's at, because she ends up fighting the one in the tree. Yeah. But before that, why is there that one fucking huge oversized stocking and the two itty-bitty ones on the right and left and the big ones in the middle where the fire's at? Like, it's like... Why is there one thing? I mean, I could fit in that thing, and I'm a big dude. Um, you can't underestimate stupidity. Yeah, <laughs> that's gonna say. Well, that's a thing in this movie. I bet okay. you the dad hung the stockings. That's what. Okay, my that's another one of my six pack. When we're talking about stupidity, and that's the Phoebe Kate story of why she doesn't like Christmas. Her father's a fucking Darwin Award winner. That's what it comes down to. He was trying to climb down a fucking chimney for Christmas. What what authenticity did you need? <laughs> you had to do that. Did you have to do that? Like, fuck. That is like just the most what the fuck horrific, horrific story. I get it's sad for her, but 
But as an outsider, uh, but it's, it's like, like, could you not have a more whacked out story to tell? Yeah. I mean, this is like one step above being married to Celine Dion in your sleep. Yeah, it is. It does it get better now that this happened this Christmas? Does it like does does she just hate fucking Christmas forever now? Yeah, her holiday season is fucked for good. There's no coming back after that. There is no. There's no coming really back. Isn't. God, it's bad. Now, um, at Mrs. Deagle's place, the lady you hate. Yes, I do. Which I gave her my generic, even though, and since I already did it last episode, obviously I was going to give the spitting one. Stripe, oh. Stripe Hawk and Loogie across the floor. But that's what gremlins do. I Come don't on. care. It's fucking gross. But since I did it with Titanic, I'm going to give her my generic this time. I know you did. But but my thing is I have a generic that she has too many fucking cats. Um, I one, prefer the gremlins, is, I think, to the cats. One is too many. Yes, in our world, because of our allergies. One cat is too many. I'd rather have a gremlin than a cat. Let's put it that way. I'd rather worry about all that bullshit. There's nothing to worry about. You don't water it. You don't feed it. That's easy. Well, he watered it on accident. Or was it Feldman who accidentally knocked over the... Knocked over the water, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then fucks up again. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. So, I I personally... uh, I still rather have the gremlin than a fucking cat. Let's put it that way. I didn't watch this movie back in the day as much. Like I didn't like, like I watched it, but you know, watching it now is a little different, you know, like I see it differently, but now when I watch it, I can imagine how people who have that darker side probably clung to this movie. Like I could see how you might've liked this back then. Cause you liked that horror and that darker edge. Right. So I could see that like, like before I never thought of it that way. And then, then I watched it again. I'm like, oh, there's probably people that saw this differently than me. And we're like, oh, man, I wish it leaned more into this. Than, it's you a know. Christmas horror movie for yeah. kids. For kids, yeah. 13 and up. It was, no, it was PG at the time, by the way. Oh, Remember yes, I told PG. you? PG. It was yeah. PG. So it was for the whole family. It was for the whole family. But I'm just going to say that. Well, I, did I tell you about the um, our brother-in-law, uh, Toby? Huh. This movie scared the shit out of him. Oh, yeah. He's still afraid to watch it, from what I'm told. That's awesome. So, I mean, yeah, that's just tr- this gave him some trauma. Um, I find that, uh, I find I like that. That kind of makes me happy. Oh, so we didn't, by the way, I'm sorry. We did not, we, we said this briefly during Titanic. We also did not mention, um, this is a requested movie from Siler. So, Siler, this is for you. Sorry. Oh, is that, this? We forgot to throw that out there at the beginning. This, this one did, was by request. Siler requested Gremlins. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I hey, what do I know? I'm just. Oh I yeah, just, you just put it on the list after we get a request for it, and you just fucking forget why. I just work here. What do I know? Um, but I want to go to my one of my six packs, and this may be a six pack of yours, and that's the Gremlins at the bar, like the flasher Gremlin and all the craziness. Yes. That's probably one of the most famous images. Is the one. Being the pervy little gremlin flashing is nothing. He has, it's like he, has, he doesn't even have sex. I'm sorry. Dude, scratch what I said. I'm an idiot. Ghostbusters is what he requested, which we are going to do. Yeah, but not... Why was I thinking it was gremlins? Not for a while. <laughs> don't people stop. Just don't listen to me. Not that you ever did. I, I, don't to listen be to honest, me. To be honest, and I'll, I'll give Anthony a pass, I thought maybe you got a message that I didn't. No, and so I didn't. Was being like whatever. I just misremembered what it was. Yeah, we did get a. So, request. anyways, I'm just saying we do have a request from Siler to do Ghostbusters. So I'm putting that out in the world. And we're eventually going to do it, but that's going to be a while because it's not Ghostbuster season. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of. But you know what, Siler, we're giving you Gremlins now. <laughs> yeah, so, you get Gremlins. You if, get Gremlins. I, how old is Siler? I have no clue. Um, I, I just remember when he was real small and now he's much bigger. <laughs> I know. I'm like, now, nah, dude, now. Nah, Would this scare him? Would this movie scare him? Well, I don't think so. No, you don't think this movie scare him? Okay. No. I see. But the Flasher Grimlin. Not, just... Siler's not a wuss like Toby. Yeah, true. True. <laughs> the, the, the Flasher Gremlin, I like that. That's an iconic scene. Kind of pervy, but, but he had not have any sex organs, so I guess there's that. But my question is, why does she it serve wasn't, them? It wasn't wet, so. Why does she serve the gremlins? 
Are you going to say no to him? Are you going to ask for ID? I'd probably run and get the fuck out of there. Let them serve themselves. And here's the thing. Is beer not water? Like, it has water, but it's just flavored with beer. So... No, I think I think the fermentation process. Well, see, then we're getting into water. Then we're getting into purity of water. Is tap water really pure? If you squirt Kool Aid on a gremlin, what happens? I don't know. There's fluoride in tap water. There's all kinds of shit in there to make it clean. So, at what point? What is purity of water? If it's from a mountain stream, are you saying I gotta maybe Coors is the only beer that can make them? Yeah, (laughs) probably Coors is a very watered down tasting fucking beer. So Coors would probably change the Grumlins. But I want to give a little shout out to Coors. They have no additives or or preservatives. That's why there's no flavor. And that is why the movie Smokey and the Bandit existed, by the way. Because back then, because they had no additives or anything, and they didn't have refrigeration trucks that could take it that far. It couldn't go east of the Mississippi. So there you go. There you go. So that's a little. What do you mean and refrigeration trucks that could take that far? They didn't have a way of distributing it fast enough until they created refrigeration trucks, that box trucks that let you take it. They weren't, it wasn't, have, it wasn't no. like today where it's streamlined. Oh, well, I guess because of theirs, it has to stay cold or what? It has to stay cold. Oh, okay. Because they don't like, use preservatives or additives. That's a thing in their favor. That's what I'm trying now, to say. This makes me want to check and make sure now. Because, you know, you go to the store, and a lot of times there's beer that's not chilled, sitting on displays, whatever. Yeah. Well, get I, Coors Banquet beer. I think that's the one that was back then what they now served. Now I want to see if I can find a display of Coors that's not refrigerated. Yeah, good point. Good point. Ooh, I, you probably will, of course, light, but I think Coors Banquet beer is all refrigerated. Okay. I don't know. That's what they say. I don't so know. I just know. I just know I looked this up for a trivia thing because I had a thing, and and we were going to do smoking in the band. Thing. So whatever. Um, now, I will say things get a little ridiculous with these gremlins when they start playing cards and break dancing and wearing leg warmers. Yeah. How do they know how to do this stuff? Uh, yeah, I mean, I get it, what they're trying, I mean, I get at the time when we watched this, it was like, oh, they're doing shit we do, you know, we were, we probably looked at that and thought it was funny, we were, I was like It's 10. like watching uh, Link play Radmobile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree, uh, I agree, it's like watching him play Radmobile, that's, that's funny, Radmobile. Um, <laughs> that's a good, that's a good movie. Um, a great movie. Did we do that movie? We did that. Did Cino? Yeah, go we back did. and go back and uh, listen to Cino Man. That's a fun movie. Now, but you gave that seventeen point two five stars. Just so you know, you gave it thirteen because you suck. Yeah, but I know it's not a good movie. But I love. I gave it, it twenty one and a half, which it richly deserves. It's not that good. Movie. Yes, it is. It's Where's somewhere juice? between, and I think that's why seventeen works. Where's juice? Where's juice? Now, wheezing the juice is something I don't think Billy should be able to do after this movie. Because with between I think he's responsible for all of this. He he obviously, I guess, you know, little Corey Feldman there did get the dude wet. He's gonna be wheezing the juice. I think Phoebe Cates would be the one wheezing the juice. I don't think Phoebe Cates is gonna get to see Billy because Billy should be in jail for what the body count is in that town. Billy's not going to jail. That's what I understand. Why in these movies are these people end up being heroes? that create the problem that they fix. That's what I don't understand. Why Why do they get to well, be heroes? Ah, uh, because the witnesses are dead. Well, yeah. yeah. The professor's dead. And come on, that thing fucking gets out. Like, are you, how long are you holding that candy bar where you can't see under the table? Yeah, I don't know why you didn't just Drop put it on the it. ground. And just let toss it, grab it. it. I'm not fucking holding that in front of a strange animal or whatever it is that I don't know anything about. Are you going to blame that animal for what it did, though? Because that dude stuck him with a needle. Exactly. You've already pissed him off. So then, oh, pretty raccoon. Want a Snickers bar? Yeah, fucking raccoon will eat your face. But they, but you know, so do you think the science teacher deserved to die? For being stupid. Well, for for climbing down a chimney at Christmas and getting stuck? (laughs) That's a 
claustrophobic sufferer's worst nightmare. I know. This is like the worst deaths possible, though. Death by a little, like, lizard rodent, whatever the fuck that is. What? Microwave. Microwave. That was bad. That was bad. I want to know where they got a gremlin-sized crossbow for Stripe. Where did they find the little gremlin-sized crossbow? Was that a pistol crossbow, or what is that? I've never seen one one of his dad's inventions. No, they were in that department store. Department store, yeah. Because they had the because they had the cool little ET reference in the department store Mm -hmm. too when they went by and little ET doll was there and he was hiding behind him. So they had a little little moment there. Little fun. Nothing wrong with a little moment, little moment like that. Now Stripe, you know we get. So the way they kill them all is. Do you do you think that's believable? Except for Stripe, of course. Do you think it's believable that they blew the building up and they all died? Do I think that's believable as opposed to anything else in this movie? Yeah, like like yeah, true. <laughs> do because here's my thoughts on that. What if that place had a sprinkler system? I mean, <laughs> did some of them, some of them live and then all of a sudden the water's shooting out? Hey, well, you got a real fucking problem. Then, wow. <laughs> then you got baby's kids. Yeah. It's going to explode. Shit going to explode. That's why I was like, I didn't, I, so I, I, it is an old theater, so it probably did, but you, you never know. We multiply. But you never know. You never know. It, 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 it made me wonder, like, I mean, could they all die? I don't know. Was that enough gas? Did they let it run long enough? Um, all ki- I had all kinds of questions. I guess I'm trying to poke too many holes. I should Dude, just say, oh, it happened. And then you gotta understand, you're asking questions. Like, I'm still trying to figure out how you're allowed to take a fucking giant dog to work and hide it under your desk. Oh, yeah. I can't even get past that. Well, you know, he could get back there and he ties it up, and I guess they may not come out and check on him often. That is weird, the whole dog thing. Now, here, let's you already you're talking about gizmo. That's that's a shitty gift. That's too much work. You can't leave your dog at home. You got to take him to work with you. They're they both are that way, in my opinion, in the sense that they're both shitty. That that the the responsibility of the animal is greater than what you can afford. It seems oh. when you're taking it to work. I also want to point out, and I'm sorry. At what point do you finally get down to that number on your to do list to reinforce that fucking sword on the wall? Oh. <laughs> I forgot all about the sword. Yeah, it, well, I think your best question is why are there fucking swords on the wall? It did come in handy later on, a, 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 to to whack one off the mother, but that was, was about it. That was something like I think, especially back then, people. That's like a display piece. I never seen swords. katana swords and all that shit was cool. The, the, like, that's you know. different. The whole katana thing was there, but not like Scottish claymores or anything on the wall. Well, maybe his dad served. Served, a, no, yeah, served yeah. himself shitty coffee. <laughs> That's all you served. Oh. Shitty orange juice. That looked very pulpy. That orange juice looked very pulpy. pulpy. <laughs> you drink, you drink that orange juice, you're like, ha ha. That coffee <laughs> was pulpy. It was, everything that his fucking inventions made were pulpy. The eggs had shells in it. Now you were talking about the dog though, and I forgot to mention this. Mrs. Deagle is she a fucking psycho dog killer? I did. You, here's the thing. I don't think, do we ever know if she did it or the gremlins did tying the dog up? I feel like we don't know. We assume it's the gremlins because I think that's point, what we're supposed to assume. But, he's thinking but, the only person could have done it is her. Yeah. But I had yeah. the same thoughts you did back in the day. I assumed it was gremlins, but now I watch, I'm like, well, you know, if the dog got out and again, and she was pissy, she might, try and hang that thing up. I don't think she would have. I think she would have taken other measures. She'd have just killed the dog. Yes. I think she just would have killed it. Feed it chocolate. Yeah. Now let's get back to Stripe. Did you like the way, I mean, you're a gore fan. Did you like the gore of that death? It was pretty gross, actually. Yeah, watching it again, it was very very, melty. Very uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Right. (laughs) That's probably where he stole that from. It like it it makes you you watch that movie. It kind of makes you want to lay off grilled cheese for a week or two. Yeah, a little it bit. Does. It, and the jump scare afterwards with the skeleton. No, that I was did, good. I'm saying it, it was a good little hor- bit of horror. Let's come milk. back for one more try. Always yes, that's uh, scream right. 
Yes, that's um, not the specific quote, but... Yeah. Now, I want to say this. It's at this point in the movie, Stripe is dead, that I would snap Gizmo's neck. I would just save us all the grief. No, Gizmo didn't do anything, though. And again... We already, I already said Gizmo knows not to eat after midnight. Gizmo knows how to follow the rules. It's when you put the responsibility on people that are not responsible. So I'd snap th- Billy's neck, not Gizmo's and the dad's. But, but if Gizmo eats after midnight, whatever that means, does he turn into a bad uh, lizard gremlin or does he turn, turn into he, a stripe? Or, or Which, I want to tell you this because this is something you don't know. It is a fact that the original script, there were not supposed to be a Gizmo and a Stripe. Gizmo was supposed to be Stripe. He was supposed to turn into Stripe and do all the bad things. And they were going to have to kill him. And there was no Gizmo. And they were going to have to save the family from the Gizmo that turned into that. So there was not... That's when this movie was much, much darker in the original script, like you talked about. I like that better. I I would like that movie. I think it would be a better movie. It, Gremlins, it, it, the original. They should. Someone should remake this and make it like it was meant. It's not even remake it. Just make it the way it was intended in the first yeah. place. Like yeah. they're doing with that Winnie the Pooh movie. What? What are they doing? I don't know. That horror movie. They're doing a Winnie the Pooh horror movie. Yes. You How do you do anything. that? You don't know anything, do you? I. You know what? I, I guess I'm just sitting here swimming in honey. You need I to look that up today. But. Um, I don't, but after all that, I don't know why you get attached to Gizmo. You seem to be still attached. I'm not attached. This thing he's spawned cute. all this. So I'm thinking, snap its neck. I'm not attached to you. Fuck you. People died. People fucking died. Not, Gizmo didn't do that on purpose. Again, it's the humans are at fault in this movie. Not Gizmo. See, I, I I don't know. Listen, Gizmo was living in a box before this. It ain't his fault that the dad swindled Gizmo away for a Christmas yeah. present. It ain't his fault that Billy was left. And we've already seen how well Billy takes care of a fucking dog. Billy was left to take care of Gizmo. Strike number two. Corey Feldman. <laughs> clumsy Corey as Feldman. fuck ever. Strike number three. Knocks over the water. Makes Gizmo pregnant. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> so again, who are we blaming here? I still think, I still think so that no one like Billy or anybody could do any damage. You got to kill that thing. No, you kill Billy or at least lock him up. Like you said. Well, I told you he's going to be locked up. What, what did you think of the ending on that? Um, the, 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 the Chinese guy come back and get it. Well, there you go. So you don't have to worry about it. Now it'll be taken care of. Well, yeah, he ended up taking it, but he should snuff it out. All right. But, um, but do you, what Why? do you think of that? him taking it. Do you think that was the right thing? Uh, yeah. It's we've proven that. Oh, I agree. But I mean, I just, not equipped, but you seem to think Gizmo's okay as a pet. So I, I don't know. It, yeah. I thought that was, at least he gave his money back. On. You know what? You have people all over having like pit bulls, fucking dogs that attack children. <laughs> so don't give me shit about Gizmo. Gizmo can multiply and take down a whole town. We saw that. So I'm just thinking it's as like. As long as you follow the instructions, he won't. You don't have to follow instructions if they're dead. That's all I'm saying. You'll never have that problem. You'll I never just, get him wet on accident. Right. You'll never feed him after whatever arbitrary midnight it is. You, you'll never. You'll never have that problem if it's fucking dead. That's all I'm going to say. So then gonna... put him in a zoo. Yeah, you think a zoo's going to take care of them? They'll spray them with the hose, and all of a sudden, we got eight million gizmos popping out. Get zoocosis too, right? You know? Because at zoos, the uh, snake pits—they spray them all down with hoses every day, don't they? No, but right? they do spray a lot of those places. They spray down. all the animals down, don't they? At the zoo? Yes, they do. Yes, every they do. animal. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong, bitch. Okay, go to the zoo. Prove I've been to the zoo. I've been there, and I saw them spraying hoses before. You saw them spray every animal down? I saw them spraying the Anthony's down. 12 o'clock, time to spray the foxes. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, this. So, at the end of this, I, I'm. Wouldn't that be a great movie, though? Gizmo goes to the zoo. 
gets free, sneaks into the aquarium. Oh, shit. <laughs> this, now, I want to tell you that the thing with this is the, uh, at the end, Gizmo had to be the one to open the blind to, Steven Spielberg said he had to be the one to do it, to be the hero of the story, rather than Which Billy. Which is why he doesn't deserve to die. He's the hero at the end. No, he's he's the reason for all the shit there. He, I think it's cleaning up your own fucking mess, really. But hey, you know, be like I said, be a hero for cleaning up the problem you created. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's like, in, I love the movie Spies Like Us, where they, uh, they shoot off a nuclear missile and then they have to be the ones to stop it. You're the ones who did it, so, hey. <laughs> I got a question for you, too. Because Gremlins, do you think... Popples were based on gremlins. Popples? Do you remember Popples? What the fuck is that? They were like the little stuffed animals, but they had their own, like, you roll them up into a little ball. Let me take a look. I'm looking. Because it's kind of like when Gizmo pops out other Gizmos. And then they went from like a popple balled up and opened up. Yeah, uh, maybe. You know, I, I just, I feel this aesthetic is a copied thing. I think we didn't see this type of thing before Gremlins, this type of looking. And now all of a sudden you get those big ears, big eyes, right? you know, babyish looking like tender features. That is a common thing now. So I think really anything that comes after this, they're just trying to capture on how this thing sold toys probably. Well, I mean, it's like Gizmo in the first place and Stripe. That's the one thing I got to say about this movie. I wholeheartedly appreciate the amount of drugs you need to be on <laughs> to conceive this whole idea and these gremlins. I mean, that is like a hardcore acid trip. Do you want to know with. that uh, uh, Joe Dante um, got the idea because he had rats or rodents in his apartment and the, he imagined the rodents doing this stuff. So he may have been on drugs when he, he was got on to fucking that, heroin. Then, yeah, to that point, he may have. But I get, but the, but it was because of rodents in his in his apartment or house or whatever. So it's very interesting. So I was tripping. The leap. So he and I was he, picturing the rodents doing all this shit. Yeah. So there you go. So, so then I made said, gremlins and made enough money to buy more good drugs. Uh, yeah. I mean, okay. how much did this money movie do again? How much money? Two twelve point nine. That is a lot, a lot of money back it in the is. day. It's only like two billion less than Titanic. Actually, not as bad as you think. We do the conversion rates. It's probably only a billion less. But um, but anyways, that's this movie in a nutshell. I don't think so. Okay. Well, you conversion know. rates. This came out 13 years before Titanic. You think the conversion rates at that changed I th- that much? I think this is half a billion, which is a lot. Which for is this different. Movie. You're saying it's a billion off. You're saying 200 million. Yeah. 13 years later is about yeah, a I billion. I get it. It's, okay. I get it. But so that's this movie in a nutshell. What's our next thing? What are we doing now? Memorabilia. What are you taking? Well, I know what you're taking. You do know what I'm taking. You're taking the leg warmers off that gremlin. No, I'm taking the bathroom, buddy. You are taking the bathroom, buddy. Um, you know, I think a great relic would be to have the smokeless ashtray. Oh, just yeah. Just because, you know, people don't do that much. So so a kid who's like 10 now would be like, what the fuck is that? But that actually was a thing. They did make those. I know. I know that. I know that. So, so but I'd like the one from the movie. That'd be kind of cool. I would like that. I would definitely want the Mogwai. The Mogwai would not be my thing. So. What about the decorative box he came in? Yes, that would be great. Yeah, that's a nice box, actually. See, I would like the box and inside the bathroom buddy. And for me, a pair of leg warmers, maybe. From Phoebe Cates? Mm-mm. I thought you were going to say like Phoebe Cates underwear that she wore. The one, the, the one that was breakdancing was wearing leg warmers. I just thought you were going to say Phoebe Cates underwear. Actually, no, it'd be cool. It would be to have the whole outfit for that one who did the flashing scene, have the little trench coat, the sunglasses, and the hat. Ooh. And then have it on a little mannequin, little gremlin, I guess. Well, actually, to have the gremlin in it. Well, yeah, that'd be nice because the they're gremlin. all animatronic. Yes. That one. Back then they didn't have CGI. There was a lot of security. They, they, 
I read a thing where they would check the people who worked on the movies trunks every day they left the set to make sure they weren't stealing and Mogwai. leaking anything from the movie. What was that? Mogwai. Make sure they weren't stealing any or Mogwai. That, any of them. Any of the, the fully formed or any of them. Really, any of them. So we're writing this up, man. What's your, you going to go, you go first. I went first. I'll go first. So um, as far as Christmas horror films go, this is a good one because there's not a ton of those out there. Like I said, just just the sheer appreciation of the amount of drugs done to come up with this idea and these characters is something I think cannot be overstated. It is truly a miracle of modern pharmacy that this movie got made. So it's, I mean, it's it's certainly iconic Gizmo, and as we talked about, he's spawned the idea for some other types of ripoff toys, Baby Yoda possibly, Furby for sure. Popples even. He's kind of done it all. But Gizmo is definitely an iconic critter. Say that. Like he's mm-hmm. up there with Kermit the Frog. That mm-hmm. good. So um there's a lot about this movie that's stupid <laughs> at the same time and sucks. And like you ra- railed on Titanic so bad. You want to talk about a shitty love story? This is it for you i forgot the random kiss that didn't make sense in this movie yeah Yeah. so but again just just for the for the gremlins fact they're like what the fuck is this i can't stop watching i'm gonna give it 17 wow i think it's for this type of movie because i mean first of all it's when you say this type of movie could you compare it to anything else that had ever come out before it uh no um i would agree um, although there was that, um, there was a movie in the eighties, was it batteries not included or another one like that where they had little monsters? Yeah. Batteries not included. That was like a, there was another one too. That was very similar. They, they all had that similar vein, but I think they came after this. So I think they all tried critters? to capture that critters. You... Yeah. Critters. I think they all tried to capture what was going on here yeah. and they didn't do it as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, this movie starts off really slow. Let's get real. It, it like you could like if you want to take a pee break, get a sandwich, and come back about thirty minutes into the movie. I think you would still have fun watching it. The party don't start till Gizmo gets wet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's. I've heard that before. Oh, hey, Corey, here's here's movie in that show. Corey Feldman makes a Gizmo wet. But you know. What's really amazing about Gizmo is how it was popular with children because of how cute it was. But then when you look at the darkness of this movie, it's amazing that we that we championed such a little creature. Um, anyways, I like, the hero. I like this movie. I don't think it's like the greatest movie ever. No. And because it's so boring at the beginning, I can't give it as high as you, but I'll go at a 14. Okay. I think this is a 14. It's not it's not guess, super exceptional. It's not super average. It's somewhere a little better than average. We are right back to last week. We are 15 and a half. And I would watch this before I'd watch Titanic again. I probably could watch this twice while you're still watching you Titanic. You would watch again. anything before Titanic because you're I not can, sitting through that again. I could watch this movie twice the time it's going to take you to watch Titanic once probably. <laughs> Oh, at least you'd probably get you'd get started on a third round. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah. So so we're right back to where we were. What what does that mean? What does that say about us? I mean, we know if you listen last week, you know what's around there. I got news for you though. Yeah. Gizmo and Stripe both would have fit on that door. You know, I think ten of those fuckers would have fit on that door. <laughs> Could yep. you imagine that's a crossover we need? Titanic and Gremlins. Ooh. The reason the ship went down. That, like that would be on a plane, but Gremlins on the Titanic. Titanic, the real reason. Mm. <laughs> Something nobody talks about because the government covered it up. Yes, it's the Gremlins. Oh, the Mugwai. The Mugwai. Well, I do got to give uh, one more shout out, though. To uh, what's his name? Which the one? Alcoholic in the movie. Oh, Dick Miller. That coined Gremlins. 
uh, yeah, well, Dick Miller, you know, he's been in some movies. He was in Explorers in the in, yep. in uh, so he's in some of the movies that we've done. So it's a nice night. I think maybe yeah. I'll walk. Yeah, he's really obsessed though with American Made at that time. That was kind of a thing more than it is now, because at that time was when things started to slip away from being American Made, and we started seeing more imports. And mm-hmm. so you saw movies a lot of time where they're like, hey, Married in America, you know. So. America. Fuck yeah. So, <laughs> so any other movies you want to talk about that, that are close to this, or do you think we're done there? That are close to this? Yeah. I mean, you um, talked about them last week, but I didn't know if there's anything that maybe you missed that you didn't notice. So we're right on, bang on Titanic, yeah. so just let you know. We, um, I, I'm just like, I'm looking at any other movies we've done just where – the movie itself, like when we're talking about ratings, this is something you'd kind of put in the same universe as Gremlins. Yeah. And not really seeing anything. It's What about Christmas movies? Is there any Christmas movies near this? Near it? Like that we've rated like that are near this? Probably not. No, Home Alone was 19. Yeah, that's a good... That's, that's like super... Home Alone 2, actually we rated... Less than fourteen point seven five. That's because that one's, yeah, it's it's well, a I sequel. Gave it, I gave it a half up from this. Gremlins, I gave seventeen. Home Alone two, I gave seventeen and a half. I gave that one like twelve, right? You did In average, yeah, because it is. If it's it's just doing the same thing the last movie didn't give me anything I didn't get before. So how can I be like it as much? You know, for sure. It's just average. Yeah. So, so, so yeah, I mean, this is a great, this is a, this is a good movie. I will say, how about Men in Black? Yeah, that's not Christmas, but hey, not Christmas. But I'm just saying, as far as a movie that's anything relatable to this, I mean, you've got it's as relatable movies, as it gets. This is relatable. It's... We gave Men in Black fifteen point seven five. So yeah, I mean, there you go. So Gremlins Those... is fifteen point five. There you go. Enough One's said. an alien. That's how we. That's basically. That's that's our. That's our baseline for weird yeah. alien ish. We don't know that Mogwai's an alien, but I'll give you that. <laughs> Mogwai's the reason Men in Black were were around. All right, are we exactly. ready? Are you ready? One more. Hold on. Oh, he's I got one more see, in him. Well, uh, I'm like, Ooh. you need to do a subset of Christmas. Where movies. is Explorers? I'm just wondering. Oh, that one had to be like twelve. Because uh, remember, twelve point two five. Yeah, because it, 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 if you take a twenty-four and a zero half and put it together, <laughs> it's it's twelve. <laughs> it's twelve. It is. Yeah, it's sad, really. Anyways, uh, all right, are you ready? I'm ready, Star Killer. Okay, we would like to thank you for listening. Is that isn't that from uh, the last Starfighter? No, that's from Explorers. Oh yeah, yeah. The movie at the drive, and they're watching. Remember? And she oh yeah, three the Dumb Star Killer. Yeah, with the, the yeah, they made a movie just to be in a movie. Uh, we would like to thank you for listening. Like also they did wanna... Home Alone. Yeah, they too, man. It's like meta. We also want you to join our Patreon so you can get some of the bonus content, other fun stuff. Maybe see your movies that you suggest to get done. Yes, do it. Our Patreon is meta. Is meta. Remember, you can go to sub sodapopcultureclub.com for all things related to the show, including your chance to make movie suggestions. Unlike the person who did not suggest the movie today that Anthony tried to attribute to. Sorry, Tyler. I'll still give this time to you. <laughs> Episode schedules there as well. You can also follow us on all the socials like Instagram, Twitter, YouTube's, Twitch, you name it. We're probably there. How active Ashley we Madison, are. we're on there. Um, I swipe right for you, baby. So, um, that's it. Anything else, Anthony? Thank you guys for listening. Appreciate it. Have a Meta Monday.